When you see a photo of an airplane that looks like this, do you ever wonder what this airplane might have looked like when it was brand new? Like rolling off the final assembly line? There's a term for this, factory fresh, and we're starting a new series on the channel. We'll be bringing you episodes on factory fresh airplanes in the months ahead. Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat launches into a new era. We're going to be talking about the F-100 Super Sabre and the F-105 Thunder Chief. Specifically, the transition from a factory fresh airplane, like this F-105 seen at the Republic plant in Farmingdale, New York, to an operational aircraft as it was used in the war in Southeast Asia. But let's begin with the F-100 Super Sabre. The prototype YF-100A first flew in May of 1953, and it achieved supersonic speed on its inaugural flight. It was an exciting new shape in the sky, the world's first turbojet-powered aircraft to fly Mach 1 in level flight. Seen here, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Pete Everest uh, set speed records in the prototype F-100, and the operational F-100C entered service with the Air Force and really revolutionized the fighter community at that time. And notice this, compare the subtle difference in the shape of the air intake from the prototype to the C model. The F-100A seen here uh, had a rather short vertical stabilizer, which proved to be a problem when the airplane became operational with the Air Force fighter units in September of 1955. As a result of violent high-speed inertia coupling accidents, six airplanes were lost in just the first five weeks of service, resulting in a complete grounding of the aircraft. With a taller redesigned tail fin solving the flight control problems, the improved F-100C entered service one year later and the F-100D model, which we'll talk about in a little more detail. And I should mention, uh, we're going to do a recap of these two airplanes. If you'd like to see more thorough videos on them, we do have them on the channel. We're going to be putting links to those videos in the title block. So let's visit the North American Aviation Corporation plant in Inglewood, California. And here's the factory, the F-100's predecessor, the legendary F-86 Sabre, is seen here on the ramp. And this uh, plant is located on the south side of Los Angeles International Airport. Well, this episode is going to feature a little-known aspect of corporate aviation photography, specifically the documenting of new aircraft with multiple views of a factory fresh airplane for both engineering and marketing purposes. What you see here is an early F-100D in what we call a raw, unretouched photo. By comparison, here's the same photo, which is cleaned, color corrected, and visually balanced for digital reproduction on your viewing screen. And yes, we do this for each and every photograph shown on the channel. This rear three-quarter view would be used as a source material by company illustrators to create compelling aerial action scenes in paintings for advertising and promotion. And this gives the viewer what we call an over-the-shoulder look at what the F-100's pilot would be seeing from the cockpit. Here's what we call a tanker shot. This is the view you'd see looking down from the boomer station of a KC-135, but uh, showing the beautiful lines of the F-100. And here's the opposite, the six o'clock view of the Hun, showing the D model's distinctive wing trailing edge with the larger inboard flaps, which increased overall wing area to 400 square feet. The single-piece all-flying tail stabilators can also be seen to best advantage, along with the cruciform fins on the auxiliary fuel tanks, which stabilize the tanks when they are jettisoned. This right front three-quarter shot illustrates the challenges that company photographers face, having to use ambient light in the factory. Background clutter seen in these photos would be eliminated by skillful retouching from the art department's airbrush group before the photos were printed. Another aspect of the factory fresh airplane is its cockpit, with all the switches, instruments, and even the rudder pedals in absolutely pristine condition. 
And here's my pick for photo of the week, highlighting the F-100's elegant lines in all its bare metal splendor. Compare the shape of the Super Sabre with the earlier generation F-86 seen above. And this airplane was retained by North American for use as a systems test bed in support of F-100 flight test and development. Of all the F-100 models, the D was the definitive design and was by far the world's most sophisticated jet fighter when it was first introduced in 1956. Of the 2,294 total Super Sabres built, 1,274, nearly half the production run, were D models. And now let's look at the F-105 Thunder Chief. Built by Republic, the prototype YF-105A first flew at Edwards Air Force Base on October 22nd, 1955, just a little more than two years after the F-100's first flight. The B model, seen here in what is my personal all-time favorite photo of the airplane, uh, is seen cruising at about 35,000 feet in what is called the high-speed, uh, high-altitude corridor above Edwards Air Force Base, just north, uh, paralleling Highway 58. And this is the airspace used for supersonic speed runs of all the test aircraft to this day. Now, although it's not formally called the F-105C, this is a test airplane, uh, the JF-105, uh, and it would have been called the RF-105C had the Air Force chosen it for a photo recon airplane. You can see the modified photo recon nose, although this machine was never fitted with cameras. But it was called the JF-105, meaning a modified airplane. There were three of them, and these airplanes were dedicated flight test birds that were used only at Farmingdale. The D model, however, became the most definitive design of this series. And here we see uh, Ship 1 on the ramp with the Republic uh, plant in the background. Uh, let's go back for a moment to that JF airplane, and I want to show you something. Uh, I've used this before, but if you're new to the channel, I have to show you the color scheme of this machine. You see that checkerboard pattern on the intake. Are you ready? This is what it was painted as. Uh, I sh I've shown this in some presentations and some of my public speaking engagements, and people don't believe it, but this was a flight test color scheme for the JF-3-105 in uh, its role as a test airplane at Farmingdale. Pretty cool. Well, speaking of the plant, let's take a look. Uh, this is the factory in Farmingdale, New York, and we're going to be checking out uh, Building 17, which was the final assembly building, and this goes back to the very beginnings of the company. You see from upper left, uh, clockwise, the P-47 Thunderbolt, the F-84 Thunderjet, uh, the F-84F Thunderstreak, and the 105 all came down the production line in Building 17. And here's the D model uh, coming down the line, and you can see the uh, it's a fairly small plant when you compare it to the giants of uh, Southern California like uh, Lockheed, Douglas, and North American uh, Republic was uh, kind of a small company, but they built some pretty cool airplanes. And here's the uh, first 105D, ship uh, 581146, uh, rolling out of the factory in its bare metal. Uh, here's that airplane in front of Hangar 1 at Republic. And a quick story about uh, ship 146. This is an amazing airplane in that uh, it was making a takeoff to the south on run runway 14, at Farmingdale in 1959 on a test flight, and uh, it lost the engine just as it was lifting off. Uh, the pilot jettisoned the tanks. The gear was already retracting. It settled back onto the runway at takeoff speed and then uh, sailed off the end into a wooded area, plowing through uh, small trees and winding up crossing and landing on the median, the grass median of the Southern State Parkway, which bordered the uh, airport. Uh, there was no fire. The airplane landed pretty much intact. Uh, the pilot opened the canopy and slid down the side without a scratch. Good uh, testimony to uh, how Republic builds its airplanes. And here's uh, ship one, 146, with uh, test pilot Lynn Hendricks on the left and the ceremonial Model T that was driven by all the test pilots at Republic, showing the progress made in transportation. This is an interesting photo because it's taken inside what is called the uh, product display area at Farmingdale. 
And this is the delivery of the first F-105D to the Air Force. Uh, they configured this uh, area for um, Air Force dignitaries and Republic executives, and it had lounges. You notice there are plenty of ashtrays back in those days, but there were models and photos. And this is the uh, area where the uh, executives and the Air Force personnel would sit and uh, make speeches, and the airplane, airplane was formally delivered to the United States Air Force at, right here. And I should mention, this airplane was electrically powered up so that uh, Air Force pilots could sit in the cockpit and look at all the systems. Uh, this is an unusual photo because you don't normally see an F-105 without the auxiliary fuel tanks on the wing, although it has the outboard pylons. But this is a nice shot of a nice, clean, factory fresh D model. And here's the same airplane, and this is uh, taken over Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. But there's something about a bare metal F-105. I don't know. The the olive green uh, turtle deck and anti-glare uh, panels, the TAC uh, badge on the tail. This is just classic Century Series 1950s Air Force jet. And compare that to the final iteration of the 105, it's one of the last F-105s ever to fly and seen here at Hill Air Force Base, 419th uh, uh, Tactical uh, Fighter Squadron, Air Force Reserve. And uh, this was the end of the line. Now, the F-100 and the F-105 shared many similarities. Both were Century Series airplanes. Both prototypes were flown supersonic during their inaugural flights. Both aircraft types were used as fighter bombers and wild weasels during the Vietnam War. And both airplanes were flown by the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds aerial demonstration team. The F-100C from 1956 to 1963. And the F-105B for only six shows in 1964. During the arrival for the seventh show at Hamilton Air Force Base, California, an F-105 was lost in an accident as the airplane pitched up for its landing pattern. That aircraft had been repaired after a hard landing before being delivered to the team. And unfortunately, that repair point failed, resulting in a fatal breakup of the airplane. As a result, the Thunderbirds went back to the F-100D from 1964 to 1968 when they were replaced by, believe it or not, the McDonald F-4 Phantom II. So there you have it, a look at factory fresh airplanes as they appeared literally rolling right off the assembly line. Special thanks to the wonderful folks who made this presentation possible. And thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. As I said, we're going to be making some changes to the channel as a result of some uh, differences in YouTube's uh, algorithms. We'll talk about that in future episodes, but we appreciate you tuning in and until next time, take care.